What is up, everyone? Happy Fantasy Friday today. Boom, Lightbringer. We're going to be talking about the whole series, all five books, spoiler free. And we will ask the question, should you read Lightbringer? And I've got reviews for all of these books in the series. Some of them are really old, very, very old. So uh, sorry about my microphone quality and my video quality is probably bad too. Although it's not like great here. So I mean, whatever. Yeah. You have been warned if you watch those videos. So yeah, Lightbringer by Brent Weeks. What is the story about? Well, there's a chosen one trope, which is not a spoiler at all. It's kind of evident in the first chapter of the first book that that there's a prophecy or whatever for a chosen one, and the chosen one is called the Lightbringer. I think people who don't even like the chosen one trope could still probably enjoy this series, uh, just because it's not like a super cookie cutter chosen one trope so yes we're in this land of the seven satrapies and the first main character we follow is kip and he's from a more poor and maybe the poorest satrapy he's basically from the place that lost a big war 15 years earlier and then we have the chromaria which is kind of like the capital of the seven satrapies and there we follow a different character named gavin and gavin is the prism which is kind of like a holy sort of role in this society and the prism can use all of the magic and with the magic they try to keep the peace within the seven satrapies and keep the magic system in balance well what is the magic system in this series well i love the magic system and it's probably the most praised part of the series but basically um during the day there's sunlight obviously and certain individuals can draft colors to create luxin and luxin is different substances and it depends like what color you can draft and the different colored luxin can do different things and some people can draft one color some people can draft two colors some can draft three or more colors and gavin the prism can draft all the colors so that's very handy and people can that can draft more than one color are also very uh helpful to have around because sometimes like drafting you know green and blue can help you with certain tasks that people who can't draft green and blue can't do really So obviously the prism is very powerful in this system. But there's a very cool limit on this magic system as well. The more you draft in your life, the more color will appear inside of your irises. And once your iris is full of color, it breaks and the like white part of your eye gets that color in it and you go like kind of crazy for lack of a better term. And that's called breaking the halos. And one of the main antagonists of this series has broken his halos, so, you know, he's a very bad, unpredictable villain. Now, Kip is the poor child from the poor area, and then the Prism realizes that he is related to Kip, so that's how Kip and Gavin end up meeting, and it kind of goes from there. And Kip is, you know, reaching, he's like a teenager, so you start to get your, like, magical powers when you're a teenager, I think, and... It's kind of like regular puberty, I guess. Some people develop certain access to drafting certain colors a bit later in puberty, I guess. Yeah, so other things I like, other than the magic system, which is phenomenal, are overall, I like the characters, and I like most of the plot, and Brent Weeks has amazing plot twists. And it's it's funny because when I was reading Stormlight Archive, I would always have like conspiracy theories and some of them would be like kind of like maybe plausible and some would be totally insane. But even if you took my most insane Stormlight Archive conspiracies, Brent Weeks has like more insane plot twists, like things that you would never guess in his books than my most insane musings of conspiracy theories. And I, I do feel like Brent Weeks does drop hints for them usually, but you, they're, like, not usually something that you can predict. I remember predicting a big plot twist in book two, but, yeah, it's not so much a puzzle to solve, but more of, like, a roller coaster plot that you're just holding on for dear life trying to keep up with. <laughs> Another great thing is the fighting scenes, combat, all of that. That's partly because the magic system is awesome and it's explained well. But it's partly just because Brent Weeks is very good at writing 
you know, action scenes. And usually I'm like confused by action scenes, to be honest. I'm like, what's happening? But yeah, they're super cool in this book. Oh, also I should mention that this is flintlock fantasy, so there are muskets. So yeah, if you're into that, this is a decent place to journey to. Um, (laughs) Things that people may not like. uh, So this book is very criticized for male gaze, particularly earlier on in the series. Like I said before, Kip is a very immature 14, 15 year old at the start. So it's always like him looking at like attractive young women and being like, wow, I could never get with her. But it's it's not even just like over description of women. I think it's not just really male gaze. It's just all of the gaze. Kip would see a guy and be like, wow, like, I wish I was in better shape like that guy is. And just, you know, there just a lot, a lot, a lot of physical descriptions of characters and, you know, how physically attractive they are, how sexually attractive they are. And uh, some people, I'm sure, are uncomfortable with the amount of times those things are described. And I think it is done a lot less often and a lot better later in the series. And part of that is because... You know, Kip matures, I guess. He gets less insecure. Same with some of the other characters like Karis. And there's a character you're introduced to in book two who also gets less insecure or more secure, I guess, (laughs) Um, with their body image and, you know, view of themselves, I guess. Kip is also just generally whiny early on in the series. Again, he gets less whiny as the series goes on. And also there's just general discomfort in this series um like there's one character who has multiple sets of dentures so they keep taking like teeth of people they kill this person's like an assassin by the way so yeah that's pretty weird and like he'll meet someone and be like that is a very nice second incisor tooth and it's just like it's just like unbelievably uncomfortable. I don't know why Brent Weeks does this, to be honest. And then, oh my God, Zyman, don't even get me started. Jesus Christ. I like had to stop reading in the, uh, geez, I can't even talk about it. Honestly, the series probably would have been better if Zyman were just launched into space at some point. But you guys don't even really have to worry about that too much. Or not early on, at least. Also, there's definitely trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape. So yeah, more discomfort for people, I'm sure. I wouldn't consider this grimdark, but there there's some of those elements there. The characters, I will say, are phenomenal, though. I love Gavin. I love Kip. I love Andros. I love Karis. And I love a character that we meet later on. Some of the side characters, though, I feel like fall off a little bit later in the series. Their arcs feel some somewhat incomplete, or kind of just like, why did we follow around this character for so long? And it definitely made the last book drag on a bit too long, but the last book, it's definitely not disappointing, because all of the plot twists come together very nicely. Going through that last month, there, there was a plot twist like every chapter, and the chapters are super short. The last book had like 150 chapters, maybe. And from chapters 75 to 140, I was on the edge of my seat. So yeah, the series ends great. Book three, definitely my favorite. Books five and one were good. Book two was good, but it dragged on a bit too long. And for me, it lacked the amazing plot twists that a lot of the other books had. And book four was probably the worst. It was very much set up for book five. Book four tried to set too many things up, so that was part of the problem. It was a lot shorter, though, too, so it was tough for it to be able to set up stuff for the climax of book four and for everything in book five. And yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, what else? Writing style? This is a bit unique of a writing style. You do get a lot of inner monologues, which I think is overall good, And it makes you kind of attached to the characters a bit. But, you know, like I said before, Kip is pretty annoying early on. So you may kind of get sick of his, like, insecurities when talking to women or whatever. But, you know, it's somewhat relatable, I guess. I don't know. I think everyone had those insecurities or, like, you know, 95% of people. So, but overall, very good. And overall, very good for scenes with a lot of, like, political maneuvering 
whether it be sort of like small group office politics type maneuvering or, you know, big, you know, Senate chamber inside a smoky back room sort of political maneuvering or whether it be like, you know, family drama or, you know, any anything like that. I think the way it was written was good. So yeah, overall great. Um, I The last two books feel like a bit different than the first three books, even though it's like the same story arc and stuff, but a lot of things change in a way that I'm not a huge fan of in books four and five. But, you know, the climax to book three, that's, that's phenomenal. I love it. But yeah, I mean, I would pick it up. I'll have to see where it ranks. Uh, I'm reading Malice this month and, you know, one book from that series for the next, you know, four months or whatever. So, so I, I do wonder if I'll like that more than Lightbringer. I feel like I actually somehow like Lightbringer more than First Law, which is that, is that crazy? There are a lot of similarities, um, you know, because discomfort, we're talking about Glockta torturing people. The writing styles are very different, but you do get a lot of inner monologues in both. And the, the action fight scenes are great. I think they're better in this than First Law, to be honest, but they're great in First Law. You get great main characters in this. This isn't, like, that similar to First Law, though. I feel like they're very different things. There's definitely more of, like, a Game of Thrones thing going on in this book in terms of, like, political maneuvering and and there's more, like, hard magic, fantasy magic stuff in here. So, if you like that definitely check out this series. And yeah, happy Fantasy Friday. Tell me if you like the work shirt, because I had to go into work today, so I didn't get to film this on my lunch break like I usually do. And the sun is setting and the light is getting worse and worse. But yeah, anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next Fantasy Friday, probably before that. But yeah, see you guys next time.